What is up my bodyweight warriors and welcome back to another video. The tutorials are back. We're gonna be whacking them out on a weekly basis. So stay tuned and subscribe if you're not already. This week's tutorial, we are gonna go through how to do the front lever. This tutorial is probably gonna be pretty in depth and I'm gonna go through not only the progressions and a variety of exercises that you can use to train the front lever, but also a rough guidance in terms of a training approach to get maximal results. The front lever is a horizontal pulling movement, it is a straight arm move that requires an incredible amount of lat and scapula strength to hold. So in terms of how I'm going to lay this tutorial out, I'm going to go through it in stages. First of all, we're going to start off with some prerequisites that you might want to have before training this movement. Then we're going to jump into some myths that are associated with general front lever training that I just wanted to cover. Then we're going to talk about scapular position and its importance in training the front lever. Then the progressions that you can use to achieve the front lever. And then finally, some extra exercises that you can throw in there to help you overcome sticking points and mix up your front lever training. So first of all, let's talk about prerequisites. Based on the progressions that I'm gonna give you in this video, you can kind of start training the front lever whenever in your calisthenics journey. However, I would say it's useful to have 10 to 15 reps in a horizontal row, like the rings, for example, and probably a solid 30 second hollow body hold just for some of that core strength. This kind of brings me on to the myth that I wanted to talk about. And that's when I hear people talking about the front lever as a core move and a, and a tough core position. Whereas in reality, this just is not that accurate. It is a really tough, movement for your lats and scapula. If you can hold a hollow body position or if you can hold your legs out straight with the rest of your body supported, then you'll likely have a strong enough core to hold the front lever. And I would say that additional core training isn't necessarily required, although it probably would be favorable. However, you will be training the core throughout your front lever training. So it's kind of one of those ones that you can add in if you want to. As I've mentioned, the scapula and lat strength is one of the most important elements of the front lever. So let's talk about scapular positioning. Ideally here, we want to have our scapula in full retraction. So what does this mean? As a useful tip that I like to recommend to people when training the front lever to get that scapular position, you want to first pull your shoulder blades as far back as possible. And from there, you want to feel like you're trying to twist the bar out you're trying to break the bar in half that you're holding or if you're on the rings you want to simulate that sort of position so you're retracting and then you're twisting and really locking in that scapular position obviously this is an ideal position and it's likely that you'll end up more in a neutral scapular position because of how gravity is essentially going to be pulling your body to the ground and you're trying to resist it when you're holding that front lever right let's jump into the progressions. As for how you're gonna progress through these progressions, I'm gonna give you a mastery rep range that you need to achieve before you can move on to the next progression. For progressions one to six, you are gonna to need to achieve four sets of 20 seconds hold in those positions to achieve mastery, or what I would consider mastery before moving on to the next progression. This is gonna ensure that if you're getting four sets of 20 seconds, you are really accumulating a lot of quality time in the front lever and building up that strength. I personally found this very, very useful when I was progressing from the straddle front lever to the full front lever. I couldn't get enough time under tension in that straddle position to really make gains. And I found it very useful doing four sets of 20 seconds in that advanced tuck position to really accumulate time. Then for progression seven to 10, I would consider mastery at four sets of 10 seconds. Simply because these moves are far more intense, if you can hold a 20 second front lever, then you're an absolute beast. The first progression that you're gonna want to use and something that I think you'll find yourself using throughout your front lever training is the scapular pull up. What this movement is gonna do is it's gonna teach you how to properly set and activate your scapula to really get it strong in that retracted position. You're gonna start from a dead hang and simply using your scapula and lats, you're gonna first of all retract and then lift your chest as high as you can make it go towards the sky. This is kind of 
how it should feel like. Some of you may not be able to get your chest that high initially when you start training this position, but the more you train this position, the more you should be able to get closer to lifting your chest into that parallel position. I personally still use this exercise as a warm up and a muscle activating exercise before I do my front lever training. And I think it's just a really crucial exercise for teaching you how to properly use your scapula, which as I've mentioned several times already is and a really important part of the front lever. Next, we move on to the hanging L. This exercise is used to start introducing a more hollow body position when you're in that activated scapula hang. For this exercise, all you're gonna do is hang from a bar or from rings. You're gonna set your scapula and then simply lift your legs into a 90 degree position. You can also do this in a tuck if you're finding it a little bit more challenging. And then you're simply gonna hold that position for time. The third progression that we're going to use is a tuck scapula pull up or essentially the beginning of a tuck front lever pull. First of all, we've learned how to set our scapula. Then we've started looking more into that hollow body position. And then finally, we're going to start adding momentum and rep to that position in the tuck. Again, to start from this, we are going to start from a dead hang, bring our knees up into that tuck position, and then using that same scapular activation and movement as the scapular pull-up, we're gonna retract our shoulders and pull, trying to lift our chest to the sky, but at the same time, we're having our legs in a tuck position. This is essentially a half front lever tuck raise. So now you should have built some strength in that scapula and lat position. You should have built some core strength up and you're ready to jump into the actual front lever holds. First of all, let's talk about how you can get into front lever. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can start from a dead hang and pull yourself up, which is probably the harder position. You can start from an inverted hang and then lower yourself down into the front lever position. This is arguably easier to set your scapula into the correct place to then perform the hold. So the first front lever position we're gonna be training is simply the tuck position. This is gonna be the most basic position that you can train and it's gonna really help develop that scapula lat strength as well as a little bit of a core element. In this position here, you wanna try and maintain that scapula retraction and that pull with the lats while holding your body in a tuck position with your knees as close as you can get them to your chest. From here, we can move on out into the next progression which is the advanced tuck. And there is gonna be several stages to this advanced tuck. The full advanced tuck is when your knees are at 90 degrees to your body. However, there's gonna be incremental changes in between. You can adjust the intensity as you progress and as you meet the rep ranges. Now moving on to progression number six, and that is gonna be the single leg front lever hold. So this position is gonna be a little bit harder than the advanced tuck position. And we're also gonna start working some of that leg extension. So as always guys, you're gonna to want to set your scapula, get into that front lever position or that tuck front lever position. And then you're simply going to try and extend one of your legs as far as you can into that full position while keeping the other leg tucked. Something I commonly see with this exercise is when people go to extend that legs, their hips drop and they go into kind of a banana shape. If you're making this mistake, then this progression is too hard for you. And I suggest that you try accumulating more time in the advanced tuck position or using some of the additional exercises that I'm gonna mention later on in this tutorial. Then we jump into the next progression, which is the pike straddle front lever. The reason I add this as a progression in between is because I find it really useful to enable people to start accumulating a lot of time with their legs slightly extended, but not all the way into future progressions. Just as I mentioned with the advanced tuck front lever, there is gonna be a variety of angles that you can work. You know, going from the angle where you're in straddle and your legs are at 90 degrees to your body and then moving more towards 45. And then eventually when you get to parallel to your body, you're gonna be in the next progression, which is the straddle front lever. This exercise is gonna vary in difficulty depending on how good your straddle is. If your straddle is good and you can get your legs nice and wide, then your center of mass is gonna be closer to those shoulders and therefore it's gonna be easier. Then progression number nine is the half lay position. I personally think that this position is harder to hold than the straddle front lever, although some people would say that the position is about even. 
I leave that one up to you. I would say the straddle looks cooler and is easier than the half lay. The half lay is honestly almost as hard as the full front lever itself. In the half lay position, you're simply gonna have the top half of your legs, so the quad to the knee, parallel to your body, and then you're gonna tuck your feet behind your legs to shorten the lever distance and then keep that center of mass a little bit closer to the shoulders. This is a really great exercise when you have mastered the front lever to really make sure you're properly extending your hips and removing any pike. And again, in the same way as we talked about the pike straddle position, you can adjust the angle to suit the intensity that you require, eventually reaching the full half lay position where your legs are parallel. That finally brings us to the full front lever at this point you will be holding your body in a completely straight, if not slightly hollowed body position. And you've made it, you've completed the game. So we now understand the scapular position. We have the progressions, we have the mastery time, so we know when to progress onto the next exercise. Let's talk about exercises that you can use in addition to your front lever training to overcome those sticking spots. The number one issue I see with the front lever is people get strong in that tuck front lever position, but then as soon as they come to extend those hips, they start losing body tension. The exercise that I like to recommend for this is the mechanical advantage pull. And as the name suggests, we're gonna use mechanical advantage to our strength. And that is that we are stronger in an eccentric or a negative than we are in the concentric. The idea here is with the mechanical pull, you choose an easier progression. You can do relatively comfortably for the concentric portion of the front lever pull. And then we use a harder progression that we can't quite hold as the negative. So for the example that you're gonna be watching now, I'm using an advanced tuck to pull myself into an inverted hang. And then I'm using the straddle progression as a nice slow negative. We wanna be going for anywhere between four and six seconds in that negative portion. As I said, this exercise is great when you're learning to move your legs into that extended position. So it works well with the straddle and also half lay or full front lever position. A more simple variation of this would simply be the front lever pull. And this is when you're gonna go from a dead hang, keeping those arms locked. You're gonna set the scapula, pull your body weight up into an inverted hang and then do the negative again. So the difference here between the mechanical advantage pull and the front lever pull is that we're not changing the position that we're completing the movement in. Then as a progression on from this, we're gonna start incorporating a little bit of back lever work and that is the 360 pull. I've covered this in a previous video, which I will link to in the description down below for a bit more details. But essentially, for example, if you're holding a tuck position, you're gonna start from a tuck dead hang, pull up with those straight arms, set the scapula, go all the way through inverted, all the way down into a tuck back lever, finally into a tuck German hang position, and then reverse the movement. This exercise is really good at comboing in both back lever and front lever work into one workout because they're both horizontal pulling movements. Next, let's move into some bent arm movements. I've actually got a bit of golfer's elbow at the moment, so I wasn't able to demonstrate them all, but I will find them from different videos I've done in the past to give you some visual representation. The first is something called an ice cream maker. This is essentially going from a locked out pull up position, lowering yourself down into a front lever position, pausing briefly and then reversing the movement. The key with this exercise is trying to avoid swing as much as possible. Like the mechanical advantage pull it is a good exercise for overloading your front lever position because you can use a progression that you might not be able to hold yet. Next we move into the simplest bent arm variation and that is just doing a front lever row. So using the same progressions that I talked about in the progression section of this tutorial and simply performing a rowing movement. So you can do it in the tuck and the advanced tuck and then if you're an absolute beast in the straddle full front lever. The final alternative is weighted pull-ups. This exercise although you're not training the front lever directly building really strong lat strength and scapular strength through heavy weighted pull-ups also translates over into a good front lever. So let's talk about how you can lay out your training. Firstly, I would recommend you download my ebook, The Bodyweight Warrior, it's completely free. In there, I have three different programs, all of which you could fit the front lever into your training as a horizontal pulling movement. If you don't wanna do this, then essentially I recommend you use a high frequency approach to training, and that's gonna be sort of two or three times a week. And then in terms of sets and reps, I recommend you stick to Prilipin's chart or Stephen Lowe's adapted Prilipin's chart, which gives you some isometric times 
to go against. Again, I will link to it in the description down below. Eventually, of course, you're looking to hit those kind of mastery four sets of 20 or four sets of 10 second holds so you can move on to the next progression. And in terms of the extra and additional movements, then you can be performing those in anywhere from a three to 12 rep range, depending on the exercise and its intensity. There is an additional recommendation I would make to people's training when it comes to the front lever and straight arm work in general, and that is a mix of bent arm and straight arm training. Don't get me wrong, doing isometric holds in that straight arm position in the front lever is really essential for building strength and attaining the front lever. However, if you do that all the time, it can lead to imbalances. And also, I do find that the front lever does benefit from some of those bent arm movements that I mentioned before, like the weighted pull up, the ice cream makers and the front lever rows. I would recommend that you use a two to one ratio of straight arm to bent arm work for your training. So if you're training three times a week the front lever, you'll perform two sessions a week of pure straight arm work and then whatever else you're doing in those sessions. And then one day a week, you'll use a bent arm extra exercise that I recommended in this tutorial. But that's kind of it guys, that gives you all the different things that I think you need to go and achieve the front lever. All you now need is time, consistency, and patience, because that's what it's gonna to take to achieve the front lever. Believe me, it took me three years to achieve the front lever from when I first started training it to about six months ago, where I got pretty consistent five second holds in that full front lever position. And even now, six months on, I'm still training it in most sessions simply because I enjoy the movement, but you need to maintain that strength. It's a tough position, especially if you're tall like me, I'm 192 centimeters, but if I can do it, and I'm definitely at the higher end of the spectrum, then I'm sure all of you guys can. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I reply to all the comments, or you can join the Bodyweight Warrior group on Facebook and share your experience and ask any questions there. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Maybe go down and subscribe because there will be more tutorials coming your way. If you really enjoyed this tutorial and you have a friend who's struggling with the front lever, then maybe share this video with them. But that has been it for this week, guys. Have a strong week and peace. Thank you.